And then Allah talks about the big one, and that's the one I really want to end, end this conversation with, even though there's, there's more to go. But Allah makes such a big deal out of this subject, that again, just like there were three ayat about Judgment Day, now there are, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِلُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ إِيمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنْ إِبْتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ Three ayat about the same subject again. The only other subject that got three ayat was what? In this list. What's the only other subject that got three ayat? Judgment Day. Judgment Day and punishment. This is the next subject that gets three ayat. And you know what the subject is? Shamelessness. People who guard their privates. We live in the ultimately shameless world today. The world in which streaming videos off of any website are mo available on your mobile device. The age in which the pornography industry is a multi-trillion dollar industry. The point of which, the agenda of which to, is to make sure every one of you is a consumer of filth in one way or another. That every man, woman and child is exposed to this stuff and they're hoping you are so you become addicted to it so you become yet another consumer. This is, this, is the, this is the gift of pornography to society. It's creating people, turning people into animals and perverts. And some of you unfortunately have that addiction. And you're watching this stuff online. And you're watching it and saving it on your apps and your mobile devices. And you don't feel bad about it anymore. You've justified it to yourself. And you feel bad about it once in a while, but you go back to it. And as a res you think, oh, well, I'm not, at least I'm not hurting anybody. At least I'm not doing it to anybody else. I'm just watching this stuff. It's okay, but you know what's happening to you? Inside your soul is being just gutted. You have no soul left inside of you. So your prayers are empty and you can't even shed a tear in your salat because your heart is so devoid of the fear of Allah because of the filth you've been watching all this time. It's turned you from a human being into an animal. So you can't even look. You, a woman passes by and you, look, you, you see a piece of flesh walking by. You don't see a human being walking by that deserves respect. You check everybody out and everything out. You're, you're constantly gawking and staring. You, can, you have a hard time putting your eyes down. When you're on the subway, when you're on campus, when you're at work, you're walking down the street, you know, you just can't help. You see a billboard, you look at you take a second look, you see a third look. You don't miss any opportunity to just to, to, to violate your soul with your eyes. You're, just, you're addicted completely. And then you say, brother, how do I get khushu'ah and salat? What world are you living in? What world are you living in? Ayyuhal ikhwa, my brothers, specifically my brothers. And I know some sisters have this issue too. It's, not a, it's a sad reality. This is a war. This is a war. This is more dangerous than any military war. This is the war that's destroying our souls. It's making its way into our homes. It's making its way, you know, if I want to protect my children from this stuff as much as possible. But when my child goes to school, and it doesn't matter if it's Islamic school, there's a very high statistical likelihood that someone, a friend, uh, with their iPod, with their mobile device, will say, hey, look at this. It's a, it's a very realistic, you know, uh, uh, a thing nowadays. It's not far-fetched. And so I have to prepare my children for the filthy world that they're, they're going to be brought up in. And there's no escape from this stuff anymore. There isn't. It's everywhere. It is everywhere. You have Islamic lectures followed up by, you know, those YouTube puts those follow-up clips. And something will be filthy. Something will have to be filthy. And I don't think that's by accident. I'm not much of a conspiracy theorist, but I'm, I don't think that stuff is an accident. And what happens to you guys is you watch a video, you see something filthy, you click it, you click something else, you click something else, and you end up watching disgusting things. That's what happens to you. <laughs> Especially when it comes to their privates, they guard them. They guard their shame. Brother, what's the solution? Should I get married? Like the guy who asked the other day, was, how can I get married right now? <laughs> you know? No, guys, the solution is not marriage. Because if you're a pervert, then you're going to be a pervert after marriage too. If you have no shame now, you will have no shame after marriage. Honestly. You, you think marriage is going to end your problems? No, your problem isn't marriage. Your problem is spiritual in nature. Your problem is psychological in nature. You need help. You need to stop this. You need to stop hurting yourself like this. You will have nothing, there will be nothing left inside you. I just had an email from a teenager who's addicted to pornography, an anonymous email, 14, 15 year old teenager. Says I want to kill myself, I can't stop. I've been watching it since I was 11. My parents don't know. I read this stuff and I cry, because he's not one, there's millions of Muslim kids like this. Millions. Millions of them. We have to help these people. We have to do whatever we can. 
And it, we don't have the trillions of dollars of advertising to counter that. We don't. And it's, there's, it's not realistic for me to say Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, every, internet, it's all haram. It's not realistic because it's a reality. It's, it's as common as oxygen now. The only thing we can do is have a mature conversation about this and teach our youth to deal with this and navigate this and not fall into it. The elders that are here, stop watching Indian movies, man. Why are you sitting in a lecture talking about Salat and the importance of Salat and you don't guard your shame? Mother and daughter and you know, uh, husband and wife and sister sitting together watching whatever? God, come on. Stop. They guard their privates. But guarding your privates doesn't mean you don't commit zina. It means everything that leads to the temptation. Everything that leads to it. They watch it. They guard it. They know it's under attack. They know that their shame is under attack. They realize that their weakness is their, their, their urges. Those urges that Allah put inside of us, that are so strong. Allah put them there for a reason. He did. And every one of you have them. You don't have to, like, I don't have to have a dalil for you to have them. I know. The guys that are here. You all suffer that challenge every single day of your life. Especially in a city like this one. At least in Texas, we're a little more conservative. Not that much more, but a little more. You know? At least in some towns, they don't allow for filthy billboards and things like that. They actually don't even allow the billboards, you know. But that's changing soon because, you know, capitalism wins in the end, right? But you guys are living in this city where you're exposed to everything and anything. Everything and anything. And you have to really go out of your way to guard yourselves. This passage is not about high goals. This is about the bare minimum. I told you that, right? This is the bare minimum, folks. The bare minimum is we guard ourselves from shamelessness. We wage a war within ourselves against that tendency. And I know some of you have tried to quit before and you go back. And you've tried to quit before and you go back again. And you go back again and you keep falling into that trap. I know some of you have done that. You know, and you're struggling with it. But don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. And whatever it takes, if you, just don't be alone. Don't be by yourself. Be with good friends. Be outside. Do, study somewhere else. Go to the library and study. Go somewhere where other people are around. Because you're, when you're by yourself, shaitan gets you. And if the fear of Allah isn't enough for you, at least the fear of other people will work for you. At least something's better than nothing. You know? For those, of, I mean, I've said this in other talks before, for the parents here, if you have a computer in the house, please don't make it a laptop. Have a desktop in the house with a really big monitor. Get the biggest monitor you can find. <laughs> Honest to God. And make sure your, 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 uh, computer is in the kitchen or in the dining room. Don't put it in the living room. Don't put it in the kids' room. Don't put it in your bedroom. Put it in the dining room, facing the public. <laughs> you want to do homework, do it over there. Though you can't move the monitor this way or that way. It's facing everybody. That's how you should have it. You know? This stuff, we have, we have to take these precautions. Don't give your 11-year-old a smartphone. What were you thinking? That's not very smart. You know? <laughs> Don't give, your, don't give them a smartphone. Why am I seeing kids in Islamic school, fifth graders, with iPhones? iPhone 5s. I don't have an iPhone 5. Why do you have an iPhone 5? With 4G, you know how dangerous that stuff is? You know? وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ Except upon their spouses. أَوْمَا مَلَكَ تَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُمِينَ Or what their right hands possess, then they're not to be blamed. Allah says we have these urges and we can execute those urges. We can release those urges, but to the halal spouse, to the spouse, our, our spouses. But outside of that, we can't. And by the way, when people get addicted to this sort of thing, and they get, they get accustomed to it, or they get over and overly exposed to it, they have miserable marriages. Their marriages start falling apart. They have this virtual idea of what pleasure means, and they don't find pleasure in their spouse anymore. And there's great fitna that comes into the family. It destroys homes. Muslim homes. That's, that's what's happening in our world today. Allah talks about the people who make salah and He says, I'm describing the people who make salah because this is the mawsuf, al-musalleen, then al-ladheena, all the al-ladheenas, all the asma mawsula here are the wasp, the sifa of it, which means the people of salah are the people who protect their shame, are the people who fear judgment day, are the people who, you know, they, they uh, um, are constant in their prayers. These are the people. The people who, are, who pursue anything beyond that, then they are the ones engaged in aggression. This is an act of aggression. 
You know when adu is mentioned, Adi, Adin from adu, from Ada Yadu. Right? Al Adun. Al Adawa in Arabic means animosity. Allah says, whoever pursues the, their urges to be fulfilled outside of the halal, outside of the marriage, whoever pursues that, then they are engaged in an act of aggression. The question is, aggression against who? Because when you say enemy, then you have to say enemy of who? If they've become an enemy, who have you become an enemy to? Allah didn't mention a maf'ul bihi, no jar majroor, nothing related to it. You know what that means? They are an enemy to themselves, their family. They become an enemy even to Allah's teaching. You know? They, 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 these are the kinds of people. The most important asset you and I have is our hearts. And this shamelessness destroys the hearts. <clears throat> it destroys it. The most, the most precious thing you and I have to preserve is our iman. And this, this, these filthy images are destroying your iman. They're tearing your iman apart. Don't let it happen to you. Do not let it happen to you. And I, I can only talk about this. I can't stop you from doing anything. And nobody else can. You will have to police yourself. You will have to control yourself. You'll have to make the decision, is my iman important enough? Is my salat important enough? You know? Or should I just carry on and pretend? You know what, what I told you about jazur, right? When you come across evil, you just don't want to deal with it. You just ignore it. You just, and that, there's a lot of people like that. They hear this stuff and they don't deal with it. They just ignore it. And you're jazur. Then you're not from the musalleen. Illa al-musalleen. If you don't, don't be from the, from the people of jazur, from, from the jazureen. Don't be from them. The people who just leave it. They don't even deal with their problem. They run from it. And they cave in every time. And they're reactionary. And that's the beautiful thing about the beginning of this passage. Halu'a, reactionary. Usually we react to temptation. You react to an image and it leads you to a site, which leads you to something else, which leads you to something else. You're constantly reacting to things. You're supposed to learn to have the right reaction. And the right reaction comes when we become people of salah.